there, welcome to your lesson today. I am Coach Danny, and today we are going to cover the topic of how this is a holistic approach to a detox versus just a detox that maybe you're used to in the past where you're removing foods and not feeling good and kind of wondering why you're even doing this. <laughs> so, Welcome to another lesson. I think I like this lesson for a lot of reasons. And one of the things is because I have been part of the health and fitness industry for 25 years now and have found that throughout the years with the different things that I have tried and different things that uh, friends and family and clients have tried, um, when they come to me, it's all about, you know, I, I've tried this cleanse or tried this detox or I've never done anything like this before. And there's usually a little bit of an overwhelm that comes on. And a lot of times we're just not really sure what to do about that. So when I was looking at wanting to do a detox and helping my clients and helping family and friends understand this better, I really love the holistic approach because, well, one, I am a certified holistic health coach. So when I went back to school for that, I really loved this approach. I was always drawn to nutrition, and when I started going through my own health issues myself, found that the natural side, the holistic side of things was definitely um, made a lot more sense to me on my journey, especially because we find that with conventional medicine, it's usually treating things separately. And the naturopathic side, the functional medicine side, the holistic side is the approach of treating the body like a whole. So what we discuss in our group here together is that this is about really teaching you how to support your body the best way possible. How to not only support your thyroid, but to support your digestive system. Your brain and your gut go hand in hand. Really your brain and your gut are so connected, your gut is like your second brain. And we want to support all of our elimination pathways. So really with this holistic um, detox, that's what we're talking about. And you're going to find that every lesson that you get is bringing you further and further to understanding not only what we're eating and drinking every day, but what we're using on our skin and our hair, what we're using to clean our house, how is our environment, how is our support, how are our careers, how, how are our relationships, how are we doing with our exercise, all of these things really matter. So with this lesson today, we simply want to look at more of a functional approach or sometimes what people look at as a paleo approach. Now, you guys will learn that I'm not fully one way of eating or another, and that's why I call my other group Fit Body Fit Food Rebels because I'm a rebel. I love to teach you guys how to look at different methods, different ways of eating, and really tailor it to what you need. Like, what is the best approach for you is really what this comes down to. So that's why when I ask you guys to build your manuals, that's really what you're doing when you're building your manual. You are looking at the different things. For those of you that purchase the guide, sometimes the guide can be a little overwhelming at first because you're trying to figure out, okay, am I eating this? Am I eating that? How is this relatable to what I'm currently doing now? Do I have to make a lot of changes? So I really like you guys to understand that you can go with this at your own pace. I am here not to tell you what to do. I'm here to help you learn, give you the information, and then of course guide you with why I suggest this and why, it, why something is a better approach and why it may help you better. You know your own body, and the more that you talk to me about what you're going through, if there's diagnosis, if there's things that you're feeling, that's going to help me to say, okay, then maybe you should follow more of the elimination diet like there is in the guide, more of the paleo approach. If you're somebody that doesn't eat meat, we have to look at that a little bit better, right? We have to say, okay, what else can we do? So that's why the guide is so helpful because it gives you all those other food choices so you can say, okay, you know what? I eat this, but I don't eat that. Am I willing to eat this? What am I willing to change uh, based off of how you're feeling? Because if you think about that, that's really what's 
going to move you into knowing that it's not always about what you're taking out, but it's more about what you are adding in. And if you really look at it that way, it makes your mindset more focused and clear. It helps you to feel better versus feeling like you're completely restricted and you can't have anything. Okay, so it's totally a, a different approach is what we want to look at it from a holistic standpoint. So when we look at this from a functional with a paleo approach to hormones, what we're looking at is trying to eat every four to five hours. And if you're eating every four to five hours, there's a simple thing that you can do with using your hand to help you measure. Your hand is a really great tool. Now, some of you I've taught this as well in my Fit Body Fit Food group, utilize um, containers for measuring. Um, some of you utilize the 21 day fix containers. Um, I have those as well. And that's something I've given away as a prize to help people. So really it's about understanding what we want our portions to look like. So if I am eating meat, you know, my hand is a great tool for that. So I can utilize and make sure that, you know, my protein sources are about the thickness of my hand and about the size of that palm. That's going to tell you right there, like obviously your hand is different than your child's hand or your husband's hand. So giving them this tool and teaching them how to look at their food portion sizes is really a great tool because it's their hand. So it goes with them wherever they go. And it yours goes with you wherever you go and that's going to help you a lot. Um, the other thing you want to think about is when you're making portion sizes in regards to sometimes I tell you like half a cup of blueberries, you know, look at your hand for the size of some of these foods, you know, an apple, a sweet potato, those kind of foods fit right here perfectly. For those of you that may be adding in um, more fats, sometimes that's where it could get a little confusing because I want you higher fat with the healthy fats and a lot of times just using your thumb to measure quite really isn't quite big enough so that's why a lot of times I'm like you know we just really want to get away from feeling like we're trying to count every calorie get away from a point system really concentrate on eating and eating good healthy food and spreading that out to a time frame during our day that's really going to work for us so you're going to hear a couple of different approaches from me about this in lessons, but also when I go live. And the reason for that is because, again, I might need to eat a little different than you do. So typically we want to eat about every four to five hours, okay? Now, if you're doing your vegetables, I want nice big portions of vegetables, like two handfuls of veggies would be would be really ideal, okay? And when you're looking at your servings and the amount of food in the what do you eat lesson, that'll help you too, to kind of see with your food, okay, that's how I measure my veggies, that's how I measure my protein. Um, I can have, you know, higher amounts of fat and, um, you know, be good with that because it's going to satisfy you. You're going to feel um, less cravings and just feel so much better. You're giving your brain what it needs to feed your hormones, which is the good healthy fats. So we also want to think about... Um, Here's the thing, if you're eating every four to five hours, now some of you, if you're dealing with low blood sugar and you're feeling like you're getting, um, let's say, a little sweaty, <laughs> some heart palpitations, things like that, your adrenals are kicking in, which is definitely an issue that a lot of us with thyroid condition will have. Um, with low, low blood sugar and adrenal issues. So this means you've gone too far. So I know I can tell depending on where I'm at because I've taught in the past that I absolutely love intermittent fasting and there's tons of benefits with intermittent fasting. But I can't really eat that way when I'm in a flare or I'm in, I'm in a healing journey. So I have to really kind of fine tune my fine tune my intermittent fasting times. So those of you that are doing intermittent fasting are taking your last meal from from the night, sleeping, and then when is your first meal the next day? Ideally, sometimes people like to fast up to 16 hours and then eat within anywhere from an eight to a 12 hour window. Ideally with intermittent fasting is eating in an eight hour window. So some people will have their first meal at 11 a.m. and eat their last meal at 7 p.m. Now, for those of you that are dealing with blood sugar issues and dealing with um, adrenals kicking in, and you wait till 11, but you're feeling like you need to eat around 9 or 10, please make sure that you are eating 
when you need to because if you are waiting too long and the heart palpitations are setting in you're kind of setting yourself up for these crashes throughout the day and then when you have a blood sugar crash it can last a few days longer it takes a while to rebalance that out okay so this is me coming to you and saying that I really want you to think about um, you know balancing our blood sugar is going to make a huge difference with our hormones and how we feel each day so that's definitely a good thing so we are looking at also a couple of different things here eating liver during your menstruation helps a lot you can also um, order beef liver um, supplements and just take the pills if you want to that's what I do and have those during menstruation and um, you always want to treat and support the adrenals, which is really what we're doing through this program as well. So I will be sharing with you guys some adrenal cocktails and a couple of different things that you can do to help you to reduce your caffeine intake and help you to feel like you're on a natural Arcadian rhythm where when it's morning you're awake and when it's nighttime you're ready to go to sleep versus feeling tired and wired at night and sleepy in the morning, okay? And we also want to, you know, make sure we're digesting our foods properly. So different things can help with that. Where we're drinking lemon water in the morning, we can add in Bragg's or organic with the mother, apple cider vinegar with water before our meals. You can also try chamomile tea before you have your meals. All of these things are going to aid in digestion and that is a good thing. We also want to chew our food and making sure that we are really properly getting the saliva and all that digestion breaking down enzymes started um, for us to help feel like we're not getting that bloating and that, that pain. If you are dealing with things like that, so we need to check in with me because you probably have something else going on. And functional medicine and holistic approaches are getting to the root cause of why you're feeling the way that you're feeling or why you can't lose weight. All of these things really matter and there's a root cause in here somewhere that we have to open up and dig into and pull it out to get to it, okay? So the other thing is, is are you doing too much exercise? This can be a stressor just as much as uh, too little exercise. And I will talk about that in a separate video by itself. But if you are overtaxing your body with way too much cardio, you know, running on a treadmill or, or running outside or walking for over an hour on a treadmill, different things like that, um, the cardio reference is different and there's a difference with me also being in the fitness industry for 25 years with seeing what is going to give us better results. So I will do a separate video lesson on that for you as well. So we really want to time our meals at least four hours apart. But again, remember, if you start to get any of the heart palpitations, the sweaty feelings, you know you need to eat sooner, and that's totally okay. So sticking to those food choices, don't overwhelm yourself with thinking about all these, you know, less amounts. What I find most people do is they don't eat enough. You should not be starving. You might be a little hungry, which is okay as you're starting to make some changes, but you do not want to be starving. So make sure you're adding in more healthy fats and feeds feeding your body what it needs. All right. Okay. So that is our lesson today on the more functional, holistic, and paleo approach to helping our hormones. I'll see you in the next lesson.